Welcome back, Tiger fans. Welcome to episode eight of The Streak Speaking. We are here with number eight, Jesus Gibbs, defensive lineman on the football team, a.k.a. Zeus. Zeus comes from Northern Virginia, and he, uh, he's come all the way here to Towson to uh, represent. So we're going to break down all, all that he's been through. I, I think he's got some wonderful stories, and we're going to really dive into that. So uh, coming out of high school, what was your path like to kind of end up here at Towson? Uh, coming out of high school, I was actually originally committed to the University of South Carolina. Okay. Um, originally played O-line and then ended up coming to Towson after I wanted to switch. Mm -hmm. Called Coach Muschamp, played defensive line my senior year. Fell in love with playing defensive line. Told him I wanted to switch. He said I could stay there, didn't have to transfer to another school, or didn't have to decommit and commit to another school. He'd be willing to take me there. Um, got there in June of 2018. Everything was going fine. Had a great relationship with the offensive staff, yeah. not really the defensive staff. Okay. So it was a little bit of still trying to get to know everybody in the process. Yeah. Actually tore my meniscus in my left knee okay. that camp, okay. second week of camp. And then was coming back from the rehab, was a scout team guy. And then along the lines of initially the strength coaches brought it up, they were kind of hinting towards me playing O-line again, which yeah. is not what I wanted. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, well, new transfer portal rules, okay. entered in. Um, to be honest, Towson wasn't my first choice yeah. coming out of the portal. I actually wanted to go and stay at FBS level. Okay. Uh, wanted to be closer to Northern Virginia. So I was aiming for like a UMD or Virginia Tech, but my waiver didn't get cleared. And at the time, I believe the transfer portal rules were still, if you go from D1A to D1A, mm -hmm. it's a two-year sit. I was I'm not sitting two years. So then I actually ended up hitting Coach Bauer, who was recruiting me when he was at Rutgers okay. oops, and at Towson. Okay. And had a relationship with him already. So it was a done deal. He came down with Coach Gus, who was the former D-line coach here yeah. back at the time. And we clicked off real easy, came for a visit that Christmas weekend, loved it. Yeah. And I signed in. Good, good. And that transition from O-line to D-line, I guess that's something that you don't really hear about when guys going into a program and they kind of know they're not going to be there past that first year, right? So did you go in there thinking, I can prove to these guys I'm going to play D-line, or did you kind of submit to the fact that you were kind of one foot in, one foot out? And what are the intricacies of that change? Like, How different is that in routine for, for a guy like you? Um... I initially came in there with the mindset I was going to prove something to them. Yeah. But then after the injury, it kind of was like, okay, I feel as though the coaches may have their mind already made right, up. Right. So I kind of did bend the wheel there a little bit. Yeah. Um, nothing wrong with it, though, because I'm still where I am at now. Yeah. Would not, would not want to be anywhere else. I'm glad to be a Tiger. Right. In fact, um, well, I would say the interest keys of it, specifically going from O-line to D-line, it's really not that much of a difference. Okay. Because it's kind of like I went from playing one position to playing somebody who I would go against. Right. So it's kind of like I already knew some of the things that O-line would do. Yep. And I, would, I already knew some of the things that D-line would do because mm -hmm. I would go against them. So the switch was pretty easy to okay. me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And you get here, have a pretty solid first year. Obviously, the COVID stuff's all over the place. You don't, don't play that 2020 season and, and all that kind of mumbo jumbo. But you go through with that with that Achilles injury uh, right. of, I guess it was October 4th or whatever year, and you posted that, that one year anniversary. And some of the big words, which is why I wanted to have you on today, that you kind of talked about were student athlete depression, anxiety, feelings of failure. Kind of go into what that was like in the injury and the recovery process, because I think a lot more of us deal with that than we really understand or realize. Right. And kind of talking about that is powerful. I always said there's, there's power and vulnerability. I went through injury, same thing, put those posts out. People notice that. Right. So what are some things that you kind of went through that, that really made you comfortable with talking about it and, and just your experience? To be honest, what made me comfortable talking about it was I actually had people in my corner who were telling me that I should talk about okay. it. Um, at first, I wasn't really comfortable with it. I was actually very nervous about it because yeah. I, I tried not to be so vulnerable at times. Right. But I decided, you know, it would be a good thing because I know there's a lot of other athletes that go out here who try their best in situations and in things that are out of their control, such as injuries, occur in their life. Or being in a situation that's not favorable to them mm -hmm. could also occur as well. So with the injury occurring... At first, it was kind of like, okay, I'm hurt. This is what it is. And then it was around my birthday. I was a month post-op. Still couldn't walk. Yeah. And I was like, dang. And that's when I really started like Googling athletes who had yeah. Achilles injuries. Sure. Kobe Bryant, the one soccer player, I forgot his name. I think it's David something. And I was just looking it up, athletes who've bounced back from Achilles injuries, sure. stuff like that. And they were all, for the most part, negative. And so at that point, I was kind of like pretty much quitting in yeah. my, and mentally like quitting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Physically yeah. still showing up, going to rehab and right. treatment and stuff, but mentally just giving up. It wasn't until I saw in the playoffs when the Rams came anchors 
mm -hmm. had got cleared. He had tore his Achilles in that camp. Yep. He got cleared in five and a half months, and that was the respark to the motivation. Sure. I was like, okay, if Cam Majors can do it, I can do it. Yeah. He did it in five and a half months. All yeah. ass out to him and the Rams training staff. I ended up pulling it off in seven months by the grace of God. Sure. So I'm thankful for I'm thankful for my training coach, uh, my strength and conditioning coach Justin Lima, as well as my athletic trainer Kyle Cherry, yeah. who helped me out through that process yeah. as well. Yeah, you, you talk about the grace of God, and I think when when you look at all that you've done, that's a big thing in your life. You also wrote, you know, like you just said, you contemplated walking away from the game of football. But you serve a God who opens a door that no man can close. And Amen. I think there are some things that, that we go through where we do have to rely on faith and we don't always outwardly talk about it. So sometimes it is refreshing to see somebody like you kind of go through that process as well. Talk to us a little bit about your faith and, and how your family's been involved. Like you mentioned, the staff and what all those people have kind of meant to you, you know, in, in your relationship with God. In my relationship with God, they've been very supportive of it. Yeah. A lot of people may not be as outwardly expressing of it as I am. Yeah. I'm not necessarily pushy in a way, right. but I do express the faith that I do have. Um, and they're very supportive of it, you know, from coaches, friends, family members, all those who like, whether they agree or disagree, they're very supportive of it. And I appreciate that. And they've even gone there where at times where my faith was shaky, even those who didn't believe, they'll help me to, you know what I'm saying, keep the main thing, the main thing. You know what you believe in. Yep. You know why you were here. Yep. Whether it's by the grace of God or in co uh, coincidence, you know why you were put here on this earth. Yep. You know what your purpose is and don't stay away from that because of a setback. Right, I hear you. And going a little bit more into family, when did you start playing? And did they ever expect that you would end up like you did? I didn't even expect it. Um, I've been wanting to play football since I was a young kid, actually. Mm -hmm. My mom always told me no because she thought I would get hurt. Yeah. I didn't play football until my freshman year of high school when my grandfather convinced my mom to let me do it. Okay. I initially wanted to play football because I thought it would look good on college resumes. I had no NFL aspirations. Yeah. Never thought about college football. It was just... It's gonna look good so I can get into a good school, extracurriculars, hoorah. Yeah. But I ended up being able to take the coaching. Uh, got moved to the varsity my sophomore year. Was actually playing O-line. I played right tackle, junior year I played left tackle. And I was, I was decent, you know, I was able to take the coaching, mm -hmm. do my assignment as well. And then that second semester of my junior year, everything just blew up. Yeah. You know, it just popped right up. And it was, I had coaches coming in from colleges and universities pulling me out of class. We got to a point where my professors were getting annoyed <laughs> and they were like, just don't come to class if this is always going to be the case. Um, but, you know, I'm thankful for that. Glory to God for that situation as well. And I was able to continue to fight that, continue to persevere through that, even though not really knowing what I'm going to do, yeah. just stay in the course. And then now I'm here. Right, right. And you talk about pro aspirations and you were named to the athletics, I guess, top 100 athletic freaks in, uh, in the country at the number 37 there. So. Uh, people say that you train like a lineman and also a skilled player. So uh, being on a list like that with those other top guys that are getting those looks, does that kind of validate or where does that put you mentally for your shot at, at playing pro? Uh, honestly, I never even thought I would be on that list. I didn't uh, know the list even existed yeah. prior to being named to it. Um, I'm, a, I'm actually very honored by it. Sure. You know, it shows that my hard work has been paying off yeah. thus far. Um, I do train like a lineman. You know, I like lifting heavy. Yeah. But I see the skilled guys running around, and I don't want them thinking that they could ever be faster <laughs> than me. Some of them are. Some of them aren't. I'm not going to say no names. Yeah. But I like being pushed in terms of physicality, see how far I can go, pushing past my limits and to see what my ceiling would be yeah. and if I can break through that. Yeah. And you obviously have professional goals, and, and those numbers are what they are, and obviously you have the belief in yourself. But what other things are you interested in doing? as kind of a plan B right. if, if the pro route doesn't work out. Because even if it does, it doesn't work out for, for 50, 40 years. So right. what do you look to do otherwise in life, some problems you want to solve, some things you want to do besides just football? I've, I've thought about this a lot. Um, my initial plan B was to just use my uh, degree mm -hmm. and go into career field. Um, I'm an economics major okay. with a track in data science slash data engineering. Okay. But honestly, it's kind of boring. Like, <laughs> I can do it for a little bit. I don't want to do too much. So I was like, okay, I'll do it for like five to ten years. It's gonna, the pay is going to be good. Then I'll start having like second streams, third streams of income coming sure. in. So I was thinking about real estate. Yeah. But that's a little funky right now with right, the market. Right. And I even thought about, you know what I'm saying, I have such a passion for training and things of that nature. Maybe open up like a competitive sports or competitive ends, like a gym to help hone athletes to become the best version of themselves that they can. Yeah. Yeah, and um, you have perspective on the faith and the mental health side, too. So that training is not just, I guess, physical right. you know, for you. You obviously have so many different different outlets. Uh, the, the, the conversations that we have, I mean, about all those kind of things, what are some of the biggest proponents of mental health that you've kind of 
dealt with and learned um, in balancing all that you, all that you balance because the schedule is hectic, right. the recovery is hectic, even staying healthy is hectic. What are some exactly. skills that you have time management wise, planning wise, that have kind of led you to be where you are? It's okay to be vulnerable. Yeah, that's the number one thing. I feel like a lot of people we shell up a lot of the times when we come to deal with that. Especially being athletes, we're supposed to be such tough people, mm -hmm. such strong people, physically willing and all the things of that nature. That we kind of tend to, okay, I'll just toughen it up and suck it up. But it's okay to express that, okay, I got this eight. Now don't let a boo boo be something that is taking you three weeks out. Right. But it's something that you're honestly dealing with and you're afraid of the health injury that you may possibly be facing in the near mm -hmm. future. Express it and yeah. let people know. Yep. Yep. And the final question that we do here, I'm not sure you're familiar, but we'll, we ask it of every guest that we have. What have you done today to make Towson Athletics a better place than it was yesterday? Practice as hard as can. Coach Ambrose talks about giving six seconds. Yeah. I believe today I gave my six seconds. Good. Good. There we go. Well, thank you for joining us again, Zeus. Obviously, thanks for coming on. No these guys are back home on November 5th for the Military Appreciation Game. Come out there and support these guys. Follow them the rest of the way. Look forward to seeing you guys soon. Go Tigers.